Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We haven't looked at an all-in-one desktop PC in a while, but I just got this one in on loan from Lenovo. This is their Yoga All-in-One 9i. It's got a 32-inch 4K display. As you can see, it is rather large. And we're going to take a closer look at this and see what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this all-in-one is all about. Now, the price point on this right now is about $1,600 on sale. This is one of these computers that does go on sale quite frequently, so you may want to shop around at different retailers to see if you can find a good price on it. Inside, it has an i9-13900H processor. It's got 14 cores. Six of them are high performance. Eight of them are efficiency. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. And then, of course, we've got the 31 and a half inch, basically 32 inch 4K display. It runs at 60 hertz. It is not a touch display, but it does run at 100% of sRGB and has 495 nits of brightness. So this will work well, I think, for video editing, light video editing, photo editing, and those sorts of things that need a calibrated display. It does go up to 600 nits of peak HDR brightness if you have an HDR movie running, but it's not gonna be as bright as some of the HDR televisions out there that'll do a little bit better in HDR. But still, the display here looks quite nice. It is IPS, so it's got decent viewing angles. One gripe I have with it as I've been playing around with it is that it sits very high on my desk and there's no way to lower the display. It is locked at this height, so you might need a higher desk or chair really to make the most use of this. You do have a little bit of tilt motion on it, and I'll tilt it to the side here so you can see what it looks like. So it's got a nice aesthetic to it, but not a lot of range of motion, especially on the up and down. It would have been nice for this arm to move down a little bit if you did want to get the display a little bit lower. Now, as far as storage is concerned, this has 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage, but most of the units that I see for sale online have one terabyte. I would definitely go with the one terabyte. This is really not designed to be all that upgradable. I believe you can swap out the NVMe storage if you want, but the RAM is soldered onto the motherboard. This is the back of the unit where all the ports are located. Here we've got our power switch. We also have our power cord, which goes out to its power brick which is about the same size as some of their gaming laptop power bricks, so it does have a separate power supply. Next to that, you've got an HDMI output. You have two USB-A ports. You'll notice there's a dongle here because that is where my wireless keyboard is currently communicating into the computer with, but the keyboard and the mouse both communicate through that dongle, but both the keyboard and the mouse also have Bluetooth capabilities, which I'll talk about in a second. You've got a second USB 3.2 Gen 2A port here, this is a USB Type-C port that is also a Gen 2 that runs at 10 gigabits per second. This, though, is a USB 4 port, even though they look the same. But the USB 4 on this is running at the slower 20 gigabit per second standard, not the 40 gigabit standard. Now, USB 4 does work with Thunderbolt devices, but many of those high-performance devices really work better with the 40 gigabits of bandwidth. This only has 20. So this is not something that I'm going to recommend for external GPUs and high-speed storage. Over here, you've got your headphone and microphone jack. Now I'm going to switch to my overhead view here for a second because the computer actually has a Qi charger on its base. So if you place a phone down on top of it, it will wirelessly charge even if the computer is turned off. So that's a nice feature. You've got a place to put your phone and you can charge it at the same time. Now the included keyboard actually isn't all that bad. It is plastic and a membrane-based keyboard, so it's not a fancy mechanical switch keyboard. There's no backlight, but I like the way the keys feel. It has decent travel to them. The keys feel very much like the Lenovo laptop keyboards that you might be familiar with already. Got a nice number pad here as well. It works wirelessly. It charges via USB-C here on the top. What I like about it is that you can switch between the dongle and two other devices by selecting these two Bluetooth options here. So you can very easily switch between different machines and use the same keyboard and mouse. Unfortunately though, this all-in-one, unlike some of the older ones that Lenovo used to make, does not allow for video input onto its display. So you can't use this as a monitor, unfortunately. The mouse here is similar to how the keyboard works. You have the dongle connection along with two Bluetooth connections if you want to pair this up with another machine as well. So not bad here, but it is basic transportation. Now the webcam is at the very top of the computer, which might be problematic because as you can see here, 
I have a lot of headroom and I really have to tilt the display down quite a bit to the point where it's not comfortable to look at it any longer. They do have a switch here for disabling the webcam so you can very quickly get that off screen if need be. The visual quality isn't bad on it. It looks a little cloudy to me, um, but it is running at a nice 1080p resolution. So you should look okay on your calls. It's got decent microphones on board, but uh, because of the height of the camera, you might have some headroom issues. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. I was very impressed with its performance capabilities given the processor on board. We'll start with some of the basics here, just browsing the web. As you saw earlier, there is no ethernet on this, so Wi-Fi is what you have for the default. But of course, you could add a USB ethernet device if you want. I have a Wi-Fi 6 network at my house here. As you can see, things are pretty snappy and responsive as you would expect on a 14 core Intel processor. So all in, I think if you're doing basic work on this, it's going to be just fine. A little bit earlier, I also played a 4K 60 frames per second video off of my YouTube channel. It played back perfectly with no drop frames. So all is good, I think, not only for browsing the web, but also consuming media. And the screen on this is big enough that it could almost double as a TV in a dorm room or a small apartment or something like that, because you do have essentially 32 inches here. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a high score here of 434. That's due to all the processing cores on here. So I don't think you'll have any trouble doing basic work on this all-in-one. So let's take a look now at some video editing. I've got DaVinci Resolve loaded up here with a 4K60 video project. Now, what should be noted is that this is just running off of the Intel graphics. There is no secondary GPU on this. So your graphics performance is going to be good for basic video editing, but if you're doing more serious stuff that involves a lot of color grading and fancier special effects, I think you're gonna to wanna to get something with an NVIDIA or AMD GPU. This is definitely not gonna be suited for that. But I just dropped in a cross dissolve here onto this 4K60 timeline. As you can see here, it rendered it pretty effortlessly in real time, so that was nice to see. I can maybe drop in another one here and see if that fares differently. Um, but altogether, I expect that we will see decent performance out of this. Again, doing the basics. And when I say the basics for video editing, it's kind of like what you're watching here with my YouTube channel. I could easily produce this channel on this device. But Marcus Brownlee and some of the others that really have a high and super high production quality with a ton of color grading and raw video that they're working with are probably not going to find this machine adequate for that task. So what about gaming? Well, again, this doesn't have a discrete GPU on board, so you're not going to be running AAA titles at 60 frames per second. But I was able to get Red Dead Redemption 2 here running at 1080p with the lowest settings at around 30 to 35 frames per second, give or take. Definitely playable, kind of like an Xbox Series S kind of playable, but still playable nonetheless. However, the primary activity of this machine is not going to be gaming, but if you set the settings low enough, you will be able to get a bulk of the PC games out there running quite nicely on this. And of course, some older games are going to run really well, but just don't get your hopes up for any kind of 4K gaming on this one unless you're maybe streaming it from GeForce Now or a service that supports that resolution. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 2,106. The graphics score is in line with other 13th generation Intel processors, but check out that CPU score. We've got 14 cores working here, and you can see that result in the uh, test score we see on screen. Additionally, the B-Link Sur 7 that I reviewed a few weeks ago, which is a relatively inexpensive mini PC, has a Ryzen 7840HS processor on board and does do much better in the graphics department and comes very close on the CPU side. So if you want a really nicely performing small desktop, you might want to look at a little mini PC powered with one of these Ryzen chips. They're not that expensive. Some of them have some really decent specs on them. You do have to find a monitor to connect to them, but you're going to get performance on the graphics side that's better than this and close to what we're seeing on the CPU side too. Now, when you're playing games on this, it actually has some nice speakers on board. The large size here helps to give you richer sound. You don't get kind of a booming subwoofer, but it's got a nice deep bass and a good range overall. So it's good for music, certainly good for movies, and also good for conference calls. Then of course you have the option of connecting up headphones or using Bluetooth. Now I also tested its thermal capabilities and we ran the 3D Mark stress test on it. There we got a score of 99.7%, which is a passing grade, which means that I did not encounter any degradation in performance even under heavy sustained load. 
Additionally, the system fan is very, very quiet, even under load. So you're not gonna hear the fan all that much. Most of the time, it's not even audible when you're just doing some basic work on it. And if you're running a game, the fan noise is going to be very, very minimal on it. So it has very good cooling for a relatively small package, at least insofar as where that CPU is crammed in. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is how well it handles alternative operating systems. I booted up the latest version of Ubuntu, and this Linux operating system ran great on here. The 4K display and video were detected properly. I was able to get audio and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so pretty much a fully functional Linux device here, and this might be a fun way to use this all-in-one by using a free open source operating system. Cool stuff. So altogether, I found this to be a pretty nice machine for people that are looking for this. I know a lot of people who watch my channel like to piece their components together, but if you're looking for a nicely performing machine that has a huge display and looks nice in a room, this I think will get you there. It's not going to be for everybody. I do wish the display had some uh, up and down uh, functionality to it just because I think it sits rather high but I can see there being a market for this because people are looking for all-in-ones that are simple. And for the most part here, you've got one cable and you're up and running without a lot of mess. And I know for some, aesthetics rule the day and you also get a nicely performing computer here that is rather large as well. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.